Okay, cool. Uh, so the title, it's up here, National Reform and Municipal Revolt in a Revolutionary Spain is actually the title of my uh, dissertation. Uh, what I'm going to be focusing on here today is uh, localism uh, during the Spanish War of Independence, which happens uh, in a small subset uh, of time between 1766 and 1823, specifically 1808 to 1814. So this is the, the French intervention in Spain. You're already probably familiar with this, if only because you've seen an iconic image by Francisco Goya, the Pes de Mayo, which records the uh, French occupation of Madrid in 1808, the event that sort of triggered all of this. You're also perhaps familiar with this episode in history because it marks the advent of guerrilla warfare in the Western world. Uh, I should mention a particularly local variant of warfare, if only because the guerrillas didn't range very far from home. I am, however, not a military historian. I'm a historian of political culture. I'm inter interested in the transit from absolutism to liberal democracy in Spain. Now, I work uh, in sort of two tropes in, the, in, the, in, the, in this period. The first is the so-called black legend, which regards, uh, sort of humorously portrayed here by Mel Brooks, uh, the notion that Spain was a backward place, stunted developmentally by religion. Another common narrative uh, in, in European history during this period is the role of the French Revolution, which essentially says that modern European states enter this period by the consolidation of state apparatus that impose authority on outlying local areas. So to see what happened in Spain, I went to the region of southwestern uh, part of uh, the Iberian Peninsula, what's shown here as the Kingdom of Sevilla, and then went to a lot of small towns around the, the main city of Seville. Towns like Osuna, uh, shown here, which would have been much smaller, obviously, during that time period. And why go to these small towns? Well, this was where most people in this time period lived. Although major events were happening in Madrid and Cadiz, as you'll hear later, the war was happening throughout the peninsula, and this is really where uh, the population interacted most directly. So instead of going to the major state archives in Madrid, I went to the local municipal archives in these regions. Uh, you see a, a sort of sampling of that here. Uh, I was mostly dealing with the records of the municipal town councils. This is an example here of a cabildo meeting. They show everything from financial records uh, to the comings and goings of officials, but also gives you a good sense for what was happening politically in these small towns. And what I've been able to uncover was essentially that there was a very lively, vivacious uh, political environment during this period where townsfolk were engaging with new ideas, uh, confronting uh, the situation provided by the, the French invasion with new notions of local government and the sovereign character of the local setting. Now this builds on a much older notion of self-government in Spain that dates all the way back to the Roman period, but is really refined during the early modern period at the University of Salamanca by jurists like Francisco de Iporia uh, and Franz, uh, Franz Francisco Suarez. Um, this notion of self-government at the local level leads to the formation of juntas uh, that are very effective in mobilizing the citizen resistance to the French. In fact, they're able to uh, push back the French invasion of the peninsula. These notions of self-government are sort of collide head-on with the notion of a, of a French regime that is trying to impose an imperial uh, standard, universal, totalitarian in some sense, uh, over these local communities, which resist. Tied to this notion of local self-government, uh, this is, sort of finds its way into the Constitution of 1812, which is really the national response to the French invasion. This is a document that has at its core principle the notion of the local as a sovereign entity. As the French are pushed out of the peninsula, this regime, this new liberal democratic constitutional regime, is imposed on areas predominantly, uh, I should say, in, in western Andalusia, the, the region I study, it has uh, this period of rule longer than any other. Towns like Los Varios use the constitution to oust a mayor they claim was despotic, who was uh, part of the old regime. In another town, some townsfolk uh, issue a petition shown here, <laughs> um, that essentially argues that they have a, a privileged right to have separate standards uh, relative to other towns because of their historic rights and privileges. So what does this all mean? Over the course of the 19th century, there's a sort of back and forth between absolutists and liberal democrats. But at the local level, we see the resuscitation multiple times of this liberal democratic culture. And it dates all the way back to this period, infused with these local sentiments of protecting uh, the, the most uh, local. By the end of the 19th century, some towns are actually going to declare themselves sovereign and independent 
of the Spanish government in, in Madrid uh, even issue their own coin. So this tendency that starts in the period I look at continues throughout the, the 19th century. And ultimately, I argue, Spain makes that transit to the modern period uh, by maintaining a close association with the local.